Uh, I'm Sado. Uh, currently, I'm a uh, permanent residence at DataWorks in Zara. So, one of the big India focused sort of uh, gaming companies out there. Uh, I'll be moderating this panel and uh, I have some experts with me. So, I'll ask you guys. Discussing on few of the points over here, which is more related to the game and app industry. So, I'll like to pass on to my other colleagues who can introduce themselves. Hey guys, uh, I'm Patrick, Patrick Kali. Uh, I've been working with Inmobi for the last eight years. Uh, I currently head the customer success division for APAC Gaming Partnerships. Uh, I basically love gaming and making money for game developers. Uh, Inmobi is a leading platform for marketing and monetization solutions. Uh, over the last 15 years, we have developed deep expertise in mobile ad systems, and we are a trusted partner for both publishers and advertisers. I'll pass. Hi everyone, this is Nikhil. I represent Adbox here. Adbox is basically uh, works on both sides of demand and supply. We help the app developers to monetize. At the same time, uh, we also work with uh, the advertisers to run the campaign, both in terms of performance as well as brand awareness. Great. So, uh, you know, before we actually kick start this, I would like to just take a survey. How many folks in here are actual game developers? Fantastic. A good majority of the crowd. How many of you are actually monetizing through advertising or other channels? So is this something, so basically the idea of uh, the panel today was to understand how can we create that win-win situation uh, between developers and the monetization partners, right? So I've been fortunate enough to spend uh, close to about 15 odd years in advertising technology. So, you know, in gaming is really exciting and what you guys are doing is fantastic. Uh, these guys are absolutely the experts with me. Uh, so, I think the first question, uh, sorry, I'll keep looking at my notes. Uh, so, Nitin, I want to start with you. Uh, so, what are you seeing in terms of advertising dollar revenue-wise or rupee revenue-wise? And is there enough money out there to support the gaming ecosystem? Yeah, so I think uh, there are ample opportunities available. Uh, because, uh, you know, so these days, this we always hear the news and everybody that uh, the data is the, uh, the new uh, revenue sources. It's the new oil. Everybody is after that to get more and more people. So, of course, the more uh, the user during this last two, three years during this pandemic, the people have started uh, even, you know, using more applications, they consume more data, they, know, they, they play more games and all. So, the, the digital presence has increased. And since the digital presence has increased, there are high possibilities that uh, you have a better medium and uh, people to reach out to, you know, showcase your product and all. So there are opportunities for both in terms of getting the monetization as well as the advertisers to reach more people which they were not able to reach earlier to be successful. So outside of just advertising, uh, and of course there's in-app purchases that you guys focus on, what other monetization uh, methodologies are you seeing in the market? So maybe I think Arthur can help us. Uh, definitely. So as Nitin pointed out, uh, advertising dollars are still out there in the market. We do see at the movie that a lot of publishers uh, from India who have global audience uh, are not monetizing the full publishers. Like for example, in Europe we see that uh, the concept we are in roughly 20-25% of the total that we see has consent to members. So we have a lot of brands lying out there who want to monetize on the but uh, all of us are yet to crack onto the consent framework. So uh, as it goes, uh, a lot of countries have their own privacy laws and consent laws. So we do not want all of us to uh, kind of spend their time focusing on this, rather work with an ad partner who has expertise 
and can take care of their consent everywhere. Uh, having said that, uh, to come to your question in terms of diversification, I think uh, every developer who is out there talks about uh, panels, investitions awarded, which are the legacy ones. But I truly believe diversification is there. Like there's no one formats, like offer walls coming up. Uh, we are recently seeing a lot of developers uh, wanting uh, their ads to blend seamlessly with them. For example, uh, in game advertising is pretty well. Uh, then we also see audio ads as a new thing uh, that a lot of uh, young developers are using. But uh, the advertising industry is there to catch on to this. So, to answer the broader question, yes, definitely there is a lot of money up for that. Makes sense. Uh, you know, in terms of revenue, right, uh, you know, I think this is something that most developers do care about is how much revenue is out there. How, you know, what percentage of their sort of revenue can come from advertising uh, and the trends that, all of the trends that you're seeing there, maybe Karthik uh, and Renault, I think uh, you guys are there. So, see, uh, basically the major portion of the revenue comes from uh, the advertisement. So, basically, uh, the advertisement almost contributes more than 50% of the revenue. However, there are other revenue models also, for example, we can do a subscription or a tax so which can add on add on circles, gain the process. So, uh, like, definitely, like, advertisement is one of the major portions, but however, there are other models, and if they keep on enforcing it, it is not a person that is two or three models, since there is no market for them, but as you know, that AI is developing very fast, there are multiple things which are done. So with the hyper casual gamers, I'm assuming that number is close to 100 percent, right? Revenue from advertising is primarily their their advertising channel. Uh, but I guess as that evolves, that number keeps changing, right? Yeah, absolutely. As you pointed out, side yes, numbers of 50 percent might be true for developers who are alpha large studios. They have their own IP. But as we see uh, from an MOB point of view, from an e-marketer point of view, uh, hyper casual studios, I would put like 99% of the revenues in Apex. At day zero, they start monetization, and at day zero, they acquire like a million users. So you don't want to lose out on the opportunity to keep those users vacant because you know that within 60 days, it's done. Like the virality of the games. Uh, it churns away. Right, right. It's not, you are not the only player out there, and sure. there are other players who come up with uh, ideas and their game is trending. It's not like uh, there is some novelty in the game, it's just that people want to see something new. Makes sense. So, you know, I think uh, one of the critical things as each of your companies sort of represent at uh, game developers, publishers, uh, what are the size, you know, DAOs, MAOs, what metrics are important? What do you guys look at, and how you know what's the right time for them to start monetizing? Uh, I think there's no one straight answer for this. Uh, if some developer meets me post the talk saying that I have thousand downloads, I want to monetize, would love to monetize. But for some developer with thousand now, my frank advice would be like figure out the monetization strategy. Like we would love to help. But with 1000 now, you are not going to scale up later. So, uh, focus on the UA part first, get to a decent scale. Uh, for hyper casual, it might start in parallel. For someone in casual or mid post sector, they want to acquire users first, kind of reach like a 100 to 100k scale, uh, cohort their users and test like if uh, ad monetization strategies are working for them, uh, and then think about how to So, below, what's your thoughts on that, right? You are seeing a lot more data out there in terms of how they are acquiring users. Um, what's the typical size where it becomes, uh, you know, credible enough for them to make some real revenue out of it? It is very important that uh, for any any game developer, like monetization, monetization is very important. So basically, uh, as a game developer, you need to know like. Uh, what is the quality of the game you are serving and what kind of audience you have, what is the retention rate and what is the daily average usage of your app or game. So
So once you have a static matrix and it, it, it keeps on growing, then you can think about the monetization. So uh, talking about the number, there is no specific number as such, but however, like any monetization, monetization partner would love to see uh, nothing less than a thousand of active users on a daily basis. Makes sense. And I would just like to add one point here because uh, I have seen it uh, with many developers irrespective of whether the app is a uh, gaming app or any other app. Most of the people are looking at uh, you know, monetizing and somewhere they have this thing in their mind that the only way to monetize is to run a banner. Or probably uh, you should have the uh, campaign only on CPM only. No, no, we don't work on CPC, we don't work on CPM. Uh, I'm sorry, we work only work on CPM and it's no way that we can work around to the other part. Unless you have a decent uh, tower now, rather than that, I would suggest on active users. The minute you have more active users, probably that's where even if you have 1000 people and if they are relevant and you show them the relevant ad, there are high spike chances that right? they might buy that product. Right? So you should be open for all sort of campaign, not just for the brand awareness campaigns, but let, let the performance campaign should also fall. There are many deals where the companies are ready and sponsor certain products by giving some coupon codes and all which helps you to sell that product. So even if 1000 people are there, I know a person who has developed a simple app to just to network with certain set of people in his business and he started putting one uh, different uh, campaigns onto that which, uh, which was for credit card and started getting earnings. The earnings might be very low. It might be 10,000, 5,000, even less than that. But it is something which is going to start and that's where you start learning how things work. And once you have enough numbers, which will suggest the, uh, the monthly active users or the daily active users, once you have that kind of numbers which you can actually go out and monetize, then there are many other partners who will help you to monetize. It's not a limit. Uh, but to start if you have very small numbers and you just want to start immediately, then I think you should go for performance companies. Yeah, as Nitin pointed out, uh, a lot of gaming developers out there want to tap into the water digital. That's where the money is. If you decide that, from a gaming studio point of view, if you are implementing rewarded video, you are taking away 30 to 60 valuable seconds of user. So the end reward that you are giving, is it truly rewarding from a user point of view? If not, the user will turn The entire effort game developers are putting to acquire that user over the last one week or two weeks of organic slash inorganic downloads, we need to like make sure that the retention and churn are also equally balanced. So I would say uh, in the initial stage you can try out performance and then there are a lot of ad networks and uh, uh, admon partners slash SSPs. Uh, you need to know their strengths. Uh, initially in the early phases the performance uh, network can give you like 30 40 dollars CPM on reward. As and when you progress you might not get such high frequency of reward rates. So you might want to count on the balance. And each ad network has their own strengths. For example, if your app is uh, not centric to any particular geography, a particular ad network might do really well uh, for banners in the Asia Pacific markets. Some other networks might do really well in the European market. So you need not focus on one, but you need to work with your partner to understand like what their strengths are. So I think that was going to be my next question was how many monetization partners should they be working with, right? What's the mix there? How do you work with them? And I know for a fact that, you know, in Mobi, AdBob, AdBob, you guys do have some good mediation there where you are allowing them to work with multiple partners to monetize more effectively. Why is that important? And, uh, you know, what is that right mix? Um, I think, yeah, that's a tricky part for the AdBob uh, or the industry to figure it out. So there's no one straight answer. Like I have seen in my experience that a single gaming studio can make the same amount of revenue working with three SDK partners. And on the other end, I have seen studios struggle working with like 20 SDK partners. So it all points down to what uh, art the each network is giving. Uh, I feel that given uh, all the gaming studios out there work with mediation partners, uh, the first foremost important thing they need to do is choose the mediation partner. Because uh, the number of exchanges connected behind the mediation also plays a pivotal role. Because you need to integrate into that. And I would say, test it out. Uh, I follow this template of uh, what we call MMCP, first mediate, 
then measure. Take two ad networks, do some A-B testing, see if that's making sense, then cohort your users and then measure. So once you follow this, you will understand which network fits in your geographies, which network fits in your respective formats really well. And then, yeah, it's up to the optimization or the monitoring. What we have been seeing is product gaming studios have been kind of reducing their ad monitoring. When the video first movement, uh, entire big change came into the video first. But there is still a lot of waterfall uh, that is in the of our apps. So, Focus your teams, uh, do not settle for one ad network if uh, the other four are giving you more than one. Yeah, and I think it's also important to address sort of the giant in the room, right? Google, AdMob, AdX, sort of those are the big uh, uh, monetization partners that everybody wants to work with. But I think it's critical to understand that there needs to be competition with that. And I, you know, Nitin, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Why so, uh, mediation is important. Yeah, so what, uh, Pratik just mentioned, I would like to add to that. Uh, of course, he rightly mentioned because once you start working with just one partner, you don't know a way you're lacking. Once you start having the other uh, ad network or monetizing partner, uh, you will have the expertise of those people also. So everybody works in a different engine, right? If I work for uh, 10 people who are into a different target audience, my audience that I'm working with, the demand that I'm generating for a specific category, my thought process will be only limited to that. The minute you add new person or you, the minute you add new angle to what else can be done, I am pretty sure the other people can help you to get in it both. So I think for, for me, I think at any given point of time, at least two to three uh, partners should be there. And uh, of course, as he rightly mentioned, you should actually evaluate, understand what kind of campaigns or business they do. Is the audience that you have, they have a similar kind of or a relevant demand for those users because uh, if you have demand for uh, say uh, 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 iGaming and uh, the users are more towards the betting side and you you are showing them an ad for uh, a LIC policy probably that's not the kind of uh, you know match that you'll be looking at. So yes of course this is very much important that you should uh, work with two to three partners at any given point of time and evaluate and keep changing them. Just don't stick to them for a very long time. Uh, you need to add new partners, then generally you will be able to analyze and realize uh, uh, where the, the strengths are of these partners and how they can add value to your revenues. And I think it's important that they help each other compete as well, right? So when you keep just one partner, one sort of uh, monetization partner in there, the goal of that partner becomes to bid the least amount to win your inventory. But the minute they are seeing more competition, the, you know, Actual auction helps raise your overall CPM, your fill rates, all that good stuff. Um, so with that, I mean, how do you see direct advertising playing a role in all of this, right? Should the game developers be focusing on that? What's the right stage to focus on that? Uh, you know, what, how are the brands addressing this? I would love to understand that. Is uh, like direct advertising? I think is the uh, way for the developer uh, when we talk about the future uh, of how uh, Like uh, when, when you start small, obviously uh, the monetization partner will uh, see like your, your, your strength as well as the quality of app and uh, number of daily active and monthly active users you have. So uh, like goes to that, obviously you can go out for uh, the direct, uh, uh, direct uh, marketing strategy. Yeah, I think uh, my personal opinion is quite laborious for game developers to directly get in contact with advertisers. Unless you are a large gaming studio like PUBG or Crafton, you have the resources to deploy your team and build that direct sales. Uh, my uh, opinion would be do not venture into direct sales. For a lot of gaming developers, how can this do? They are just starting up and kind of in the initial phases to scale journey. I would say uh, there's an alternative way for this. Uh, work with your admon partners. Uh, they uh, of late one of the trends that we are seeing at Inmobi is uh, we are packaging uh, their audiences into curated deals and selling it to advertisers on their behalf. So they, uh, we, uh, in terms of uh, SSPs, we know the kind of brands they want to spend on their audience. 
so we can curate that on your behalf. And we venture into uh, something called as private marketplace deals, programmatic guarantee deals. So that can lead into a segue for brand partnerships. Uh, of late, to be specific for India, I think a lot of festive season is coming up and with a cricket world cup around the corner. Uh, we do see publishers doing lock-in deals. Uh, they sell bulk of their inventory to one at one partner and they even guarantee that, okay, I'll fill this up with uh, one premium brand partner out there and it will not be on CD. We do a, a minimum revenue guarantee sort of thing. So that way the publisher is guaranteed that there's someone paying a high work for their inventory. Uh, having said that, there are studios which do a lot of direct sales because they have their unique data. Like we can take examples like I think uh, in the data.ai seminar, they spoke about uh, subway surface. They have their unique data. You can see talking. It's a billion dollar. Uh, so they have their own IP like talking from every child that's out there. So they can venture into brands and they can have that potential to convert those brands. Oh, makes sense. And uh, Nitin, uh, I think Karthik is sort of on the right track there where uh, PMPs, private marketplace deals and curation by the mediation there or the SSP uh, is becoming big. And I see a lot of video ad spend that has moved to that side. So are you seeing more and more ad networks, SSPs helping curate that and do the deals directly? Yes, so uh, I agree to what uh, Karthik said, uh, there's always a right mix and uh, uh, to be honest, uh, you know, uh, at this point of time we work, we, how we work, I, I can certainly give a lot of examples but uh, running out of time I'll just uh, put certain, there are many partners, so as a company we have worked, we have helped many developers to monetize. But to what I understand at this point of time is that any developer who is who is new in the system and who has developed an app, uh, recently their focus uh, should be or rather they have their focus into development and keeping the product stable. Uh, going out and reaching out to the advertisers and getting the business from them, uh, they have to uh, diversify their efforts and energy which they can put in developing and making that product. Also that time there are chances where we work with developers for, for a period of one year or so where we represent them in the market for at least a year when they are working on the product and we make the market, we create the buzz. During this duration they also learn and understand how this thing works and eventually after one year or so when they understand the product, when they understand the reach, they, they have the knowledge of the product and market, that's where they start doing it from themselves. So that's, that's another way of doing it. Makes complete sense. So I think we are running short of time. I want to open up. Does anybody have questions? Do you want to do you want to talk about a certain aspect of uh, monetization from your end, or we have just bored you for the last 20-30 minutes? All right. I think that's that's it. Okay. Thanks, guys. It was a pleasure having this chat. I hope something came out.